What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I'm gonna share with you my top five Python tips and tricks for writing better, cleaner code. So as you can probably tell from looking behind me this week, I'm traveling for work. So I don't have time really to put together a long uh, tutorial video this week. So I wanted to share some of my favorite things that you can do in Python to write cleaner, better, more Pythonic code. Trick one is going to be applying a filter function to a list of numbers. Um, so for this example, I have the numbers one through nine in a list and I'm gonna define a function that's going to return the values that are um, a even divisible of three. So to do that, we're just gonna um, define a function is multiple of three and we're just gonna pass in X. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna return numbers where X um, remainder three, this is the modulo operator, uh, is equal to zero. So this basically means x divided by three has no remainder. So that's how we define a function that just basically separates out numbers that are even divis divisibles of three. But now to use the filters uh, function, what we'll do is we'll make a new object. We'll make a, just a new object that I'll call mult three, a new variable. And we're just gonna type filter, and then you give the filter function two arguments. First thing you give it is the function you're using as your filter function. And then the second is you give it the list that you're applying the filter to. So this line here is basically saying, okay, use the is multiple of three function for every value in my numbers list. And it's gonna store it in this mult three. Now, mult three is not already a list. So to uh, display it as a list, you need to take that variable you just defined and use the list operator built into Python like this. But now what you'll see when I run this is uh, it's gonna give us all the even divisible numbers of three. So there you can see it gives us three, six, and nine just by using this filter function. And so we didn't have to use a for loop and iterate through the entire list. We were just able to do it using the filter. So that's obviously a lot quicker and cleaner than setting up a full for loop. Okay, trick two is called the ternary conditional, and it's essentially a special type of if-else statement that's intended specifically to shortcut through true-false if-else statements. So essentially where you're checking if a Boolean is true or false, then do one thing, and then else do another thing. Uh, it's a really great shortcut for simple if statements. So let's say you had a function where you had a condition that was true-false, and the normal way that you're probably used to seeing an if-else statement is like this if condition, then set result equal to one, okay? Else set result equal to two. And so using this, we could say print the result, okay? And now we know if condition is true, like it is right now, and we run this, it's gonna give us a one. But if we change this to false, and we run it, it should give us, there you go, a two. But there's a special tool Python has specifically for these kinds of simple if-elses that check against a Boolean, and it's a lot shorter than this. So for the shortcut, you just write it this way, result equals one if condition else two. So this right here is saying exactly what these four lines of code did, and that's called the ternary conditional. And just to prove to you it works real quick, I'll go ahead and I will just comment out that little function section. So now you'll see we're setting result based on condition all in one line here. So if I run that, right now we still have condition equal to false, so it's giving us a two. But if I change this to true, and I run it, you'll see we get a one. So this is really useful for simple if else statements. I keep saying simple because uh, obviously some people actually prefer the, the viewing um, style, the readability of this kind of if else statement just because they feel like it looks a little more logical. I would make the case that because this is quite a bit uh, shorter, fewer lines of code, and it's pretty easy to read as long as you have a simple if else, this is just as good, if not better. In any case, it's a useful thing to know, and that's tip two. 
Okay, tip three is gonna be using Python's set variable type uh, to store unique values. So let's make up a new numbers list. Let's say that we have one, 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 two, three, three, four, 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 five, six, 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 seven, seven, eight, nine, 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 zero. Okay, let's say we have this really long list. I probably didn't need to take that long making it, but I did. Um, now, if we want all of the unique values in this number list, we are going to create a set. And by to do that to this number list, all we have to do is say, we'll say my set equals, and just type the word set, and then uh, op open and close uh, parentheses, and then put in the variable, the uh, the list that we want to evaluate. And then I'm just going to print my set, and let's take a look at what this does. Okay, you can see we get in these curly brackets printed out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which makes sense because not only are those all of the numbers, um, all of the numbers, but only unique. So if you're familiar with SQL, this is like select distinct. It's taking one of each type of uh, value, but then it's also ordering them for you. So that's what set does as well. So set is ordering and only taking uniques. And you notice the curly brackets down here. If you have um, a, a set of values that you know from the beginning, you only want the unique ones, but for some reason you typed in duplicates, you can use these curly brackets um, and you will be basically one, two, three, four, five, 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 six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and let's put a zero in here in a weird spot too. So looking at this, you can say, oh, okay, well, I defined a set right from the beginning because if you don't use colons, it knows it's not a dictionary, which is the other time you'd see these curly brackets. Um, but you'll see we have three fives and it doesn't go in numerical order. Well, if I print uniques, check out what it does. Okay, now it looks exactly like the first list because it will order them numerically and it will remove out duplicates just by putting in these parentheses. So you can skip the uh, using set on a list if you know from the very beginning you want it ordered and you want unique. This is two different ways to use sets. It's a really useful tidbit to know about Python and that's tip three. Okay, tip four is really uh, easy, really quick, and something that I think is useful if you're dealing with very large numbers, stuff where you might almost be getting into scientific notation kind of world. Um, if you have a number with just so many zeros that it is impossible to tell what the number even is, I don't know, and they don't have to be zeros, I should state, but like just looking at this, you don't know, is this 10 million, 100 million, 100 billion, 100 trillion, you don't know just looking at it, okay? Well, uh, you can't use commas because commas are used in defining tuples. Commas have a lot of programming value, but what you can use are underscores in Python. So if you have this really big number, um, you can use underscores and it's not going to mess with your um, actual ability to do math on these. It's still storing them as numerical uh, values. And this can go in combination with decimals and it won't impact your ability to do math. So now if I wanted to print out the result of adding these together, um, despite having um, underscores and decimal places in there, what you'll see when I run this is it doesn't mess with the value at all. But now, of course, you're looking at this and you're saying, well, we did all that uh, work to format it so it looked better in our program. Is there a way that we could format it in the output? And yeah, that kind of goes with this. So uh, a, t a way to change that is you can turn your number into a formatted string. And a formatted string is just a Python string where you put an F at the beginning. And if you have variables that you want to use inside of it, you use curly brackets again. Whoop. Use curly brackets again. And you can put your numbers, your math, right inside this. And if you want to add formatting, this is a really cool part, you can add a colon and then you say what you want your separator to be. So I'll show it with a comma first. We're basically saying, I want to print the, the result of this math out as a string, and I want you to use commas to separate those out. So check this out. Okay, it gives us the correct mathematical answer with uh, commas separating out every three characters. You can also, if you prefer looking at it this way, you can also use the underscore. Um, the formatted string uh, does have a few different options. 
So this is just a few ways to make numerical operations, especially with larger numbers, look a little bit better in your Python um, and use uh, format strings, underscore separator characters, and that's tip four. Okay, tip number five is gonna be about using the Lambda style of defining a function in Python as an alternate way uh, to the DEF method of defining a function. So if you have a function like uh, a simple function, like let's just call it add nums, where you pass in two numbers, X and Y, um, and you want to just return the result of adding them together, okay? This is a very simple and easy function and you don't necessarily need um, to use the DEF. Basically the exact same style we could make in add nums two, where we say equals lambda, and then you say what variables you'll be passing in, so x and y, and then a colon, and then you say what operation you're doing, what you, the result needs to be equal to, and it's just going to be x plus y. And so we did it all just in this one quick line. And if you have an advanced Python IDE, like I use PyCharm, you may even get a pop-up saying, um, hey, don't use Lambda. So uh, like here you can see if you can, I know it's a little text, but it says do not assign a Lambda expression, use a DEF, because um, Lambda is really only a useful uh, tool for uh, simple programs that you want to run once. Um, it's not really quickly callable, returnable like that. Uh, it is the right way to pass parameters into like buttons. So if you're using Kivi buttons or tkinter buttons, you may find yourself using Lambda functions. So this is a really useful thing to know. Um, and just to demonstrate that it does work the same, I'll just run add nums for you really quickly. And um, I'll pass in this num1 and num2 that I defined in the beginning of the program. And then we'll do add nums2. And I will pass in uh, num1 and num2. And I guess we want to print both of these so that we can see them in the console. And what we should get, because we can see we have a 10 and a, fifth, uh, 10 and a 5, is we should get, if I run tip5, we get 15 twice. So you can see, like, we're doing the exact same math twice. Um, essentially, the reason to use Lambda would be you have a quick function that you just want to do the operation of once. Um, it's a simple and easy alternative to a function. But as soon as you're doing anything complicated in here, like multi-line math, where you're saying, like, x times 15 equals x, and then, uh, I don't know, uh, x minus y plus seven it doesn't matter like as soon as you're into multiple lines of code use the the def it's the right way to define complicated functions but knowing what a lambda is how to use it and um, kind of what its place in python is is a really useful tip as well okay thank you guys so much for checking out the video those are my top five tips and tricks for writing better cleaner python code and if you have any extra tips that i missed things that you'd like to see covered in a future video or questions about what you saw here today be sure to just leave it in a comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel. Uh, every bit of support helps me out a ton. So thank you so much for watching the content and let me know what you want to see in a future video. Thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.